completed its first decade. The occasion was not left unnoticed. No less than 470 events celebrated Wikipedia's 10th anniversary in every inhabited continent and at every corner of the world. Barbecue parties, meetups at pizzerias, gatherings at cinema halls and theaters. Each group of Wikipedians chose its special setting, but in all cases, these were community events of people who wished to work together for a good cause. Wikipedia's decennial turned out to be the single largest, most widely celebrated event of the Wikimedia movement so far. During the past 10 years, Wikipedia has come to mean so much to so many people. It brought together millions of people who have this thing in common, the belief that free access to knowledge is something every human being deserves. Today, Wikipedia receives 400 million unique visits every single month. It has 18 million articles in 270 languages. Wikipedia is the fifth most popular web property in the world. Thank you to all those who contributed and keep contributing to the editors, the donors, and supporters. Thank you to all those who believe in our mission and help us walk this challenging path. Okay, uh, hi everyone, welcome back. Give a hand to Aurel. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, so my name is Aurel, uh, Aurel Kine. I'm a board member with Wikimedia Israel and one of the lead organizers of this event. Uh, there are a few uh, cherished traditions in Wikimania in the recent years, and one of them is uh, uh, the uh, opening speech by the executive uh, director of the Wikimedia Foundation, Sue Garner, and I'm delighted to invite her to address you. I think that's the first, is my mic on? Yes. I think that's the first time my talk has ever been described as cherished. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like ridiculously flattered. <laughs> is it possible to make that light that's shining right in my eyes? That can't change, can it? Maybe I can hide from it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can just hold my hand up like this through the entire talk. Maybe I will do that. That's better. Thank you. Okay. So um, I was really thrilled to hear uh, Yokai's. Pr oh, is that Evelyn? <laughs> it's the long tradition of babies talking at the beginning of my speech. <laughs> it started last year. <laughs> so um, I loved hearing Yokai. And part of the reason I loved hearing him was because um, I am a huge believer uh, in expressions of joy and pleasure and empathy and warmth and love. And I loved hearing the research that, uh, that he cited on that topic. And I want to try and do something, and this might not work, and if it doesn't work, please bear with me, but I want to I wanted to try and do something. Can you look around near where you're sitting and find a person who you do not know? I'm not sure if that's possible. <laughs> a cross board, maybe someone you don't know well. <laughs> Ideally, someone you've never met before, you've never spoken with. <laughs> don't start talking now. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to do a thing, okay? So my father is an Anglican priest, and uh, he has uh, involvement in a, in a, in a Spanish-originating uh, uh, Church of England tradition called Curcio. Curcio is all about the expression of joy. A lot of it is about the um, informal leadership, giving voice to informal leadership, and um, expressing joy and pleasure in each other's company and sharing peace with each other. So I'm going to try and do something that the Curcio folks do, which is I'm going to ask you to find that person who's near you who you don't know. Exactly, Brian has it. <laughs> find the person you don't know, touch them, shake their hand, give them a hug, something, and tell them why you came to Wikimania this year and what you hope to get out of it. <laughs> the board has to do it too. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Guillaume has to do it too. <laughs> Hi. 
hug each other. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right, that's enough. <laughs> okay, sit down now. We're taking as long as we need. Help me make them stop. <laughs> that's enough, love. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> So I, for I forgot when I thought about that, that if you give Wikimedians an opportunity to talk, <laughs> they will take it. <laughs> so we're 15 minutes back late from the break, and then we're going to talk a little more. <laughs> okay, so um, we are actually a little bit uh, late back from the break, so I'm going to try to um, tighten up my talk a little bit. And before I start talking um, officially with slides, I'm going to say that uh, this is a hard talk for me, right? Jimmy sometimes um, says that when he speaks at Wikimania, it's the most stressful talk he gives all year. And the same is true for me. You guys are a tough audience. <laughs> um, and the purpose of my talk, it's a, bit of a, it's a bit of a sort of a tough purpose too, right? Because what I'm doing here is my, my role on the stage is to provide accountability to you, right? You are the stakeholders, you are the constituents, you are the partners, you are the colleagues and friends of the people who work at the Wikimedia Foundation. And so my purpose in, in, in coming here is to, it's an accountability exercise. It's for me to say, here's what we did in the last year, and here's what we're planning to do in the next year. And then what happens is the board comes up, and you get to pepper them with questions, <laughs> and I sit down. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely for me. Um, but but the reason it's tough for me is because uh, uh, I, I want to give you a lot of data, right? I want to give you a lot of charts and graphs and numbers um, because I want to be accountable. But at the same time, that kind of stuff doesn't really go over that well in, in, a, in, a, in a presentation, right? I would actually rather tell you stories. I am more inclined to tell you stories. So I'm going to try and do some kind of hack between telling some stories and showing some numbers. Um, and, and as a preemptive measure, I would say that if you're interested in, in more information than you're going to get out of this talk, I would send you to the Wikimedia Foundation website. The annual plan, the 2011-12 annual plan, is available under financial reports on the left nav. And you should go there, and there'll be much more information there than I'm able to actually present in a brief period here. Okay. Um, I just want to put out this, because I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the humor you get. <laughs> Welcome to Haifa. <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start by stepping back a little bit out of the year that we just had into the uh, strategic plan year. So um, you all probably remember that in February of last year, the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees approved our strategic plan, right? Our collaborative vision for the movement from 2010 to 2015. Recapping quickly for anyone who doesn't know, it was a very risky um, and, and elaborate and ambitious process. Uh, it might have failed. We were concerned when we started it that it would fail, but it didn't. We had a thousand Wikimedians from around the world participating on a wiki through Skype, through message boards, through face-to-face -face meetings, through phone calls, all sorts of stuff to drive the creation of this vision for us all. And it was a significant accomplishment for the movement. It was an important thing. Um, when we, when w our goal in running the project was to uh, settle in and get a high-level view of where we're at today and where we want to be. So this is where we're at today. This is w where the plan um, found us to be, which is essentially, you know, if you stop down and you think about it, Wikipedia is now 10 years old. The projects are coming up, all of them, on being 10, whatever, up to 10 years old. Um, and they are globally popular. They are read by people in virtually every country around the world. Most people who are on the internet have access to a Wikipedia language version. It may not be very big, but they have access to a version that's in their own language. And people are finding it enormously useful. As the, um, the video that the Haifa folks made showed, 400 million people um, are reading Wikipedia, right? So we've been really successful in, in building this thing over the past 10 years. So why does it work? And here I echo some of the stuff that Yokai was saying. Why does it work? Wikipedia has flourished because it's a shrine to altruism. It's a place for shy, learned people 
to deposit their trawls. It represents a belief in the supremacy of reason and the goodness of others. And it works because the people who know the truth, cast Sunstein, the people who know the truth are more numerous and more committed than people who believe in a falsehood. Last year was our 10th anniversary, January was our 10th anniversary, and I was really delighted to be talking in New York to a French journalist who said this to me. She said, making fun of Wikipedia is so 2007. <laughs> And I thought that was so nice because, you know, the 10th anniversary, it, w it offered two things to us. It offered us the ability to, or an opportunity or a chance to have a whole bunch of parties, right? So we had great cakes, there was dancing, there was skydiving all around the world. People ran their own celebrations. It was fantastic. But it also offered the world a chance to um, stop down and think about what do they think of us? What do they think about what we are doing, right? Yokai alluded to some of this too. When Wikipedia started, nobody thought it would work. Even Jimmy didn't think it would work. Nobody expected it to become what it has been, right? It's a disruptive thing. When it first started, people were suspicious of it. How could it work? It doesn't make any sense. They made fun of us in the Stephen Colbert report, et cetera. Um, but what we found on the 10th anniversary was people took stock, right? And across the board, the coverage that we saw coming out of that anniversary said, this thing is awesome. This thing is amazing. We love this thing. We're glad this thing exists, right? So that was a nice moment for us because everybody stopped down. We all reconfigured where we were at. We set aside our early suspicions, our concerns, our anxieties, etc. And the world told us that they love what we're doing. So going back to the strategic plan, what we found when we, when we did that sort of pulling out of uh, assessment of where we're at, what we found was enormously popular, fabulous, web projects, lots and lots of readers, lots of editors, but we also found a, an enormous opportunity for us that was not being exploited. And you guys know this, so I won't go into it in elaborate detail, but rich parts of the world, right, where there's high literacy levels, where there are terrific educational systems, where internet access is available to everybody and it's cheap, where people can afford laptops and desktops, where people have the leisure time to write an encyclopedia, those are the parts of the world where we thrive, right? What we realized as we worked through the strategy planning process is there are enormous parts of the world that are opening up to us. They're becoming ready and receptive. They are going to want Wikipedia language versions in their own languages. We're not yet there for them. We haven't built enough for them yet. And that's where we need to turn our attention, right, is to building editors, building readership in parts of the world where we historically have not done as well as the places you can see the dark colors where we have. So that was the opportunity available to us. So I will recap very quickly the uh, targets that came out of the strategy plan. They're pretty straightforward. The numbers are kind of hacky, right? The numbers are kind of guesses. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to increase the number of readers. We're a public service project. Our goal is to serve readers, right? The more readers we serve, presumably, the better we're doing at fulfilling our mission. We want to increase the number of articles to 50 million. Again, that's an approximation, right? But what we want to do is we want to make lots and lots and lots and lots of information available to people. And we want to make it really high quality. We want to make it as good as we possibly can. In order to do that, we need lots and lots of people to help us in that work. And we want more of those people than is the case today to be women and to be people from the Global South. And I want to take a second and congratulate the organizers of Haifa, who apparently have managed to get 22% women to this year's Wikimania. Because I remember Taipei, and so does Florence. I remember Taipei and the Wiki Chicks lunch, which was 11 people. <laughs> it was 11 women. <laughs> so that's what we're trying to do. So I'm going to recap last year's results. Very quickly on the money. The money was great, right? We made lots of money. We made 50% more money than the previous year. The money is important because if you're angsting over money, you can't focus on getting your work done, right? So we made enough money to get our work done. And then I'm so sorry about this slide, right? Because like, it's a big, <laughs> dense, ugly piece of crap. <laughs> and I'm sorry. And Jan Bart was laughing at me when he saw it. It's embarrassing. But I will, you know, it's an accountability thing. I have to walk you through some level of granularity, and I apologize. Um, the 10th anniversary celebrations, they were terrific. We, uh, last year, started doing new editor outreach work in India. I think Hasham Mandol is probably here somewhere, and he's now hired a couple folks to work with him on that. 
we're started to, we did start to lay the groundwork for a similar kind of editor recruitment work in Brazil. The Virginia Data Center, Rob Halsell is here somewhere, the Virginia Data Center up and running, Rob has moved to Virginia. Uh, the Public Policy Initiative, which was funded by a restricted grant from the Stanton Foundation, the Public Policy Initiative uh, was a project designed to persuade professors to assign writing Wikipedia articles as classwork to their students. We know that editors have always been, you know, grad students, undergrad students, so it seemed really obvious to us if we could persuade professors to assign article writing as coursework, that might be some kind of beautiful symbiosis of the right people coming together and getting really important stuff done. We did not know if it would work. We ran a big project, 17 months, it did work. They added 1.8 million bytes of text to the English Wikipedia, and the quality of those articles, which was uh, determined through an extremely complicated algorithm, increased 140%. So that was a success, that was good work. Um, the upload wizard became fully deployed on commons. Did someone clap for the upload wizard? <laughs> um, the article, oh, let's have some clapping for the article feedback tool. You can do it. <laughs> The article feedback tool deployed in English Wikipedia. Mobile front end extension dark launched. Field research, lots of field research conducted into mobile usage. Resource launcher fully deployed to all the projects. <laughs> I like this. This is useful information for me. <laughs> um, Wikilove. <laughs> English, Hindi, and Arabic. If you ask for it, you will get it. Um, Offline, we developed tools for offline distribution of Wikimedia content, including an improved cross-platform reader application. <laughs> we gave out $770,000 to chapters, to individuals, and to like-minded organizations. Um, some of the people who got some... <laughs> <laughs> Some of the people who got some of that money are in this room and actually are giving talks. So uh, we, we have fellows, the Wikimedia Foundation funds a number of fellows. Um, Achal, I think, is here. Uh, Liam Leonard. <laughs> I'm probably missing some fellows who are here. <laughs> James Alexander <laughs> is here. The fellows who are here will be presenting their work over the next couple of days. A lot of interesting stuff has been done. Um, and yeah, that leads me to the last bullet, which is we have done significant research uh, into editing patterns, uh, into editor demographics, attitudes, and satisfaction levels. And I think Howie Fung is going to present some of that stuff over the next couple of days as well, and it's super interesting. There's Howie. So that's some of the stuff that we got done. Now, if you go back to the, um, if you go back to the targets, the 2015 strategy plan targets, how are we doing against the targets? Super roughly, super lightly, I would tell you, you know, are we increasing the number of readers? Yeah, we're increasing the number of readers. I would like us to be doing it faster, but the number of readers is moving in the right direction. It's going up. Are we increasing the number of articles? Yeah, we continue to make more informational material available to people. Um, is the quality of that material going up? We don't have broad-based, rigorous quality assessment yet, although the article feedback tool is a sort of first step in that direction. You know, but we have some indicators. Quality typically continues to improve. We have some indicators through the public policy project and so forth that we actually can drive it up, and so we will be able to do more of that. So that's all good, right? Less good, increasing the number of active editors and increasing female editors and Global South editors. Now, for female and Global South, we only have one data point, right? So we don't know if it's going up or it's going down. But in general, we know, we all know, that we are struggling with editor retention. We're not doing that well. That is our focus point, right? So going forward, when, when we look at this, in many ways, we're doing terrifically, right? In a few areas, we are, we are not strong, right? And that is why, for the next year, the next number of years, the Wikimedia Foundation focuses its attention on the editor issue, right? On the number of editors issue, because that's where we're not doing well. So what we're going to do in the coming year and again, I would point you to the annual plan for more information, because I'm not going to do it justice uh, in just a few minutes here. Um, <laughs> and another horrible slide. <laughs> but this is the last horrible slide. So um, this year, and actually, you should, you should give me some feedback, too, on how you feel about these things. This year, visual editor, a new... <laughs> mm -hmm. 
the louder, the louder you clap, the harder Brian will code, <laughs> right? <laughs> we really want it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the visual editor. We, we remember those of us who saw, who remember the usability videos from a couple years ago, right? PhDs, wonderful, brilliant people trying to edit Wikipedia and just like recoiling and freaking out, right? So we need a no markup default editing environment. Um, new editor retention features. <laughs> So this is the work of um, Brandon Harris, among other people, and Brandon's going to be doing some presenting later, too. What? <laughs> um, so this is experimental features designed to make on-ramping easier and more fun onboarding of new people and to improve interactions between new and experienced editors. So one example of the kinds of things that we have done um, is Wikilove recently, right? More and more and more and more of that kind of thing. A lot of that work is going to be experimental. It's going to be exploratory. We're going to do some stuff It's not going to help. We're going to do some other stuff. Surprisingly, it will help, and we will do more of it. Lots and lots and lots of experimentation around that area. Um, I mentioned the PPI before. Growing out of the PPI, which was a time-constrained, uh, limited funding, restricted funding project, we have created a team run by Frank Schulenberg, which is called the Global Education Program. <laughs> so the purpose of, of this group is, again, you know, students are the fuel of Wikipedia, right? When we persuade professors to assign article writing as coursework, it works terrifically well. It works because um, students like Wikipedia, they think it's cool, they think it's fun, um, they like writing for an audience that is bigger than one professor, right? And their professors like it when their students are engaged, and some of their professors like to be seen or to understand themselves to be innovative or inventive. So there's something in it for everybody in that, right? It's worked really, really well. It also requires ambassadors, Wikipedians, to act as ambassadors, which it turns out that Wikipedias are real, Wikipedians are really good at coaching other people into how to do that work. So the PPI worked. We're going to spin it out, and we're going to continue doing that same work, mostly in India and Brazil over the coming year, and also Canada, Germany, and the UK. Um, mobile. <laughs> So mobile is really, really, really important. Um, and I'll probably talk a little bit more about mobile later. Um, we need to develop and launch the new platform. We need to develop and launch uh, new participatory features. So we did some research, which also I think is being presented at Wikimedia, into how people want to use uh, Wikipedia on their mobile phones, what kinds of things they want from us. We need to give them what it is that they want. And we need to develop partnerships um, with carriers. And the goal there is that we want to make it such that if you have, um, whoever provides you with your mobile phone provides you Wikipedia for free on your mobile phone. <laughs> because education is a human right. <laughs> Wikimedia Lab, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped. India, Brazil. <laughs> So Hisham is, is leading the group doing new editor recruitment in India, and we're going to be starting a similar kind of work in Brazil. Um, we're going to launch the Wikimedia Labs. <laughs> Purpose of that is uh, we, we, we cannot and we do not want to do everything ourselves, obviously. We want it to be possible for lots and lots and lots of people to work with us to do their own research, their own experimentation. So that's the purpose of the labs. And then we're going to put um, some sustained energy for the first time towards internationalization. <laughs> and we're going to do that because part of reaching the Global South is making it possible for them to edit easily, right? So obviously, um, we want to support non-Western languages, which currently aren't very poorly, or aren't very supported, well supported technically. So that's the work of the next year. How am I doing for time, James? That's good. OK. I'm going to finish a little bit early so that you can get to the board. So I'm not going to walk through these targets in, in, in detail. There are seven of them. There's lots of dates and numbers. Again, you can refer to the plan. Um, but what I will say is that uh, 
Seven sometimes feels like a lot, right? Like seven feels like a lot, and you kind of think to hold it in your head to really grasp um, the, the most important focus of the year, it's hard to actually remember seven things. And so in the staff, when we talk about it, we, we really pull it back to two things. There are two primary things that we're looking to get done in the coming year. The first is mobile, right? So the world is changing, right? It used to be the case five years ago, 10 years ago, when the projects started to grow, it used to be the case that most of us experienced the internet through desktop computers or laptop computers, right? That is still the case for many people, and that is the, the, the earth in which Wikipedia was born, right? It was that you were sitting at a desk, you maybe had a shelf of books with you, right? You had a big screen, you had a proper keyboard, etc. It grew out of those conditions. And today, what we're finding is huge swaths of the world, enormous populations coming online and going immediately to their cell phones, right? We do it ourselves. We're all constantly using our cell phones to tweet, to be on Google+, whatever we're doing, all sorts of stuff. We're not interfacing with the internet. We're not interacting with the internet nearly as much through desktops and laptops as we used to. More so now, we're finding the mobile phone sufficient to get done what we need to get done and having all these wonderful qualities such as portability, which make it more, um, more useful to us and therefore more used by us, right? What that means is we need to reinvent ourselves, right? We need to reinvent our projects. It is possible for me, anyway, <laughs> it is possible for me to edit Wikipedia uh, from my cell phone. I can do it. It was a little crashy for a while. Now it seems fine, but it is painful, and I can't imagine doing it very much, and I can't imagine any of us doing it to the degree that we edit from a, from a desktop or a laptop, right? So we need to reinvent ourselves. We need to reimagine ourselves so that we're, we're, we're fitting what we are into how people are using technology, right? We need to continue to support desktop and laptop usage, but we need to figure out other ways to be useful to people. So that you take a phone, you take a picture with your phone and you upload it to Commons, whatever. There are ways that people can interact that, that fit with the devices and the kind of technology that we're doing. We need to do that. The other thing we need to do is we need to really crack the editor growth problem. So what I say to the staff um, is that these are the two things that I will feel that we have done a good job if we make serious progress on both of those things. These are the things that I would invite the people in this room and the people not in this room to join us in working on. These are the important things, the important pieces of work that are ahead of us for the coming year, right? There's the mobile piece and there's the editor growth piece. We don't have change over time data, like I said before, for women and people in the global south. So we don't actually know, maybe those numbers are flat, maybe they're increasing, it's hard to tell. I do think that 22% women here is some kind of small indicator that we might be going in the right direction um, on the female metric, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't count on that, right? So these are the areas where we need to focus our energies over the next little while. And that is why I think we gave you guys cards or something with, with things that you can do to help. Since the Wikimedia Foundation has released the Editor Trend Study and has been talking a lot particularly about the participation problem, one of the questions that we often get is, how can I help? Like, great, you guys do WYSIWYG or whatever, but like, what can I do? And so we made up a little thing for you saying things that we think that you can do if, if you want to be helpful. So I thank you on that note. I invite up the board and uh, enjoy the next couple of days together here at the conference. Uh, we have to get used to it. So are you wor really worried about this trend or do you just accept it as natural? Who would like to uh, address this? Well, this is going to be uh, a major topic uh, that I'm going to discuss uh, in my talk on Saturday. Um, so I, I think it's somewhere in between. I think it is something that we all need to really focus our attention on. I think it's very important. I don't think it's a crisis. It's not something I'm super uh, worried about. Uh, but I do think that it's critical. Uh, there's a several different uh, reasons for it, I think. Um, I don't think it's as simple and uh, if it were as simple as it was a fad for a while and then people got tired of it, then I think we would have a serious and, and, and really um, frightening problem. I think it's a combination of things. It's a combination of how difficult it has become, uh, in particularly in the larger communities, for people to penetrate the community. 
uh, with all of the, the policy bureaucracy and things like that. And so that's really what I'm going to focus on in my talk on Saturday. Um, it's also, to some extent, and, and less worrying, uh, particularly for the larger languages. Um, you know, I, I recently went uh, and looked up a, a politician, uh, George Wallace, who was the governor of the state where I was born, very controversial politician. And I, I hadn't thought about him in years, and I went and I read the Wikipedia entry about him. And when I got to the end, I thought, I couldn't possibly add anything to this. It's really, really good. Um, and that's just natural. Whereas some years ago, I would have said, oh, George Wallace, I know a little bit about that because I grew up in that state. And if the article were one paragraph long, I would add, uh, oh, and he ran for president and he got shot and these kinds of things. Now there's not as much for me to add. And so if, if it takes fewer people to do some of that work, I don't think that, that's just natural. That's something we shouldn't worry about. But we shouldn't be complacent that that's it. Uh, we shouldn't be thinking, oh, well, Wikipedia is really big now. We don't need as many people. There was a, a lot to write, and now there's less to write. There's still a lot to write, uh, particularly in uh, the, the smaller languages, obviously. Uh, and there are things that we can do in the community to accidentally, uh, nobody's doing it intentionally, but to accidentally turn away really good editors um, who uh, feel intimidated by the bureaucracy and so on. Um, okay, so a kind of a follow-up question to this, and well, then I promise to give the audience uh, uh, do share. Um, so one of the proposed ideas on how to, to counter this threat, this threat was make Wikipedia into a kind of a social networking site, uh, like compete with Facebook on, their, on people's attention, basically. Um, and some people think that, for example, Wikilove is a first step in this potentially dangerous, perhaps, uh, direction. Uh, so do we want to make uh, our projects a kind of a social networking site where uh, actually editing is uh, a distraction? Or what's your take on this, Phoebe? Well, I'll answer your first question, <laughs> not that question. <laughs> but for the first question, we want to be around for the long haul, for the long term, for our children's children. and. That's why we need a vibrant and healthy editing base well beyond us, well beyond our work here, well beyond our lifetimes. We need to think about the future. And for me, that's the, that's the question about editor trends. How do we, how do we keep this going for forever? Um, for social networking, I don't know. So, yeah. so you, you just heard uh, the, the speech of Professor Benkler. And one of the fly, uh, one of the slides he showed is, be human, speak like a human, right? So I think this is a good idea. Okay, so now as I promised, let's take a question from the audience. Yeah. Uh, yo, sure. Okay, sure. On, on that second question, um, I think, no, we, we shouldn't turn into Facebook. Um, uh, I, I think w one of the big trends, I would say, in the last two years uh, in, in the internet world, in the world of, of internet development, uh, has been this uh, concept of game mechanics. Uh, things like uh, Foursquare, where you check in and you win badges and awards and things like yeah, this. Um, I, I feel that building game mechanics into a website is what you do when you don't actually have a good idea of what you're supposed to be doing. You just try to make it a game that people find addictive, which is completely pointless. If you want a game that's really addictive, just go play Farmville because it's an actually a game, right? Um, I, but at the same time, I think we should not be so resistant to the idea, oh, and fear that, oh, we're going to go in that direction because we're not, to identify things that we can do in the software to make being human a little bit easier. Uh, one of the things that people like to do, people have always done in Wikipedia, is thank people. Um, I think uh, this started in the English Wikipedia with barn stars, although it may have started in German Wikipedia with gummy bears. Um, but we've always done this, only in order for me to thank you, I have to go and learn about templates, you know, and I have to know which template to do. It's, it's, you know, I see these beautiful notices and, and I don't know how to do it. So the, that's the concept of Wikilove. Let's make that easy. It's something we know people want to do. 
Uh, they want to be prompted to do it. And that, that doesn't mean we're turning Wikipedia into a game. It's identifying behaviors that we want to do as human beings, and we just make sure the software uh, gives a pathway for making that easy. So for the people who have been a law around for a long time, uh, it seems like there's been a lot of a change in the way that people think about and talk about the projects. You, if you were around in the early days, 2001, up to maybe 2005 or so, Wikipedia and the Wikimedia projects were kind of this cool new thing that you were involved in, and maybe you were kind of a nerd, but people talked about it as this little niche in interest. You had something in common with the people who started early because you were an early adopter of this thing. You had something in common with everybody who was doing it. And you talked about it. It was new. It was exciting. It was fun. And gradually, it's become something that's just part of the internet. Like, it's a site that you go to. Everybody knows about it. Maybe there isn't really anything new and fun about it. And I think it uh, hasn't been as exciting for people. Maybe you're not as excited to join the projects when you know it's just part of the internet. It's always been there. It's strange for me to think about actually being part of the last generation of people to grow up without Wikipedia to refer to in school. And mm -hmm. That kind of amazed me. It made me feel a little bit old, actually. But <laughs> <laughs> so how do we make it exciting again? And that's something that I think that the social network part uh, may actually help with. How, how do you make it exciting to interact with the project again? If you know that when you start it, you're going to uh, open up your universe to a world of people who have uh, something in common with you, who have something to share with you, that you're giving something to them and they're giving something to you, I think that's really exciting, and I think that might drive more people to participate. So I hope that those features will do that. Uh, people criticize the Wikilove feature as like, oh, it's going to turn into Facebook. It's going to turn into social networking. And if you don't think that everything is a little bit of social networking, you haven't, just haven't been looking at what's going on around you. You go with your colleagues at work and your colleagues at school, and you interact with them. You learn something about their lives. They're part of your life. That's social networking. The thing that's interesting about Facebook is that it takes the goals out, out of it. You're not trying to learn something. You're not trying to some, get something done. Uh, in addition to the socializing, you're just socializing. Uh, Wikipedia is kind of like school, kind of like work. You're getting something done, and you're meeting people, and you have something in common with those people. Uh, adding features to make it easier to be more human doesn't turn it into Facebook. It just makes it more like the rest of your life. So I think that we should be doing that. Uh, hello, okay, I have a, I'm way back here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I have a question about uh, a different kind of growth, not necessarily in terms of editors. It's not just that editors, sort of editorship mostly plateaued uh, in 2007. They're all also the sort of scope or breadth of the project has also been stable for about as long in terms of, in the sense that there haven't been any new wiki projects added since 2006, is that right? When the last one was added? So in any case, it's been a long time. Um, there are a series of, uh, meanwhile, there's a lot of people doing interesting work uh, under free licenses and even on wikis out there. There's a number of really great genealogy wikis. There's a, a, a bunch of work on uh, sort of academic articles and AccuWiki and a series of other places. Uh, and a number of these have actually been sitting as proposals uh, in the sort of new project proposals, but that process has been stalled. And so I wanted to know what the foundation is, uh, the plans are to help push that process along or uh, to how they want to handle the idea of growth in terms of new wiki, pro wiki projects or in terms of scope. Okay, um, I'll let you choose. <laughs> Sam? <laughs> that, that's a great question. I, Phoebe and I were on the special projects committee when Wikiversity was proposed as uh, I, basically the last new project that we created. And at that point, the foundation didn't want to make those decisions, and there was some confusion about how the community would go about it, and it was delegated to a committee. And, and it was a very long, drawn-out process. There was a lot, of, a, a lot of discussion back and forth between Meta and, and these private mailing lists. And um, for sure, today, we don't have a clear process for how new projects get started. I think this is one of the most important ways for us to grow and actually one of the most important ways to address issues of editor involvement. There are people taking part in so many collaborative knowledge activities online. Uh, the vast majority of them aren't covered by encyclopedic knowledge. And, but they're all, they're all knowledge. And they're all things that matter a lot to people in the world. So I, I think 
we, in addition to being human and connecting and helping connect with one another, we also have to be good listeners and observe what people are, what knowledge people are sharing from their own lives, how they're capturing the things that they learn, and finding ways to, to facilitate that. Uh, this, this came up in our discussions of movement roles that's been going on for, uh, for the past couple of days as one of the issues that isn't really picked up by the foundation or by chapters. And uh, it's actually a topic on the agenda in the Our Bell Room at the end of the day. So there's, there's a nice proposal for how to, have, uh, how to have a procedure to assess what projects contribute to knowledge and how large, like what that scope is, who the, who the audience is. Uh, in addition to whether people can have something to contribute, there's the question of uh, how universal the knowledge is disseminated. Just to go back to Yochai's awesome presentation one more time, he was saying that some of the most valuable aspects of society, some of the real strengths of our society, are distributed everywhere. And there are some aspects of knowledge which are also distributed everywhere. Genealogy, for me, is the best example. Uh, the, uh, the question of the genealogy of, of our generation is something we could solve in five minutes if everybody just contributed what they knew. And yet, uh, having proprietary databases that store this and share it is you know, a multi-billion dollar industry. That's, uh, out everywhere, everywhere except Iceland. So that's ridiculous. We can fix that. <clears throat> so I, one of the things uh, that I think is interesting here is to take a look at some of the projects we have. And uh, let me just say very clearly, I'm not speaking on behalf of the board, and I'm actually giving a personal opinion that I think I've never said out loud before. Um, but when we look at certain projects, uh, one that's very near and dear to my heart is Wiki News. And Wikinews has not been the success that I think it could have been. We live in a, a time when the Huffington Post, by at least one measure that I saw, now has more traffic than the New York Times. And yet the Huffington Post, while it is largely community generated, and it's a really interesting model, it's not high quality like we would aspire to. It's not neutral. Um, a lot of their traffic comes from quite inflammatory headlines, uh, sort of uh, click trolling and things like this. Or so it's been said. I'm not making this criticism. I'm just repeating what I've heard. Um, <laughs> some say. Um, <laughs> citation needed. Um, but when I think about this, and I think about, okay, well, what does Wiki News need, and what can the foundation provide? And the truth is, the foundation has never provided very much to Wiki News. We're very focused on uh, Wikipedia. We're lesser focused on, well, let's say, Wiktionary, for example, another project that has certain needs that the foundation has not been very good at providing. One of the concerns I have about what uh, Mako was asking is if the foundation starts a new project without sufficient resources to really commit to that project, it may actually crowd out more innovation that should be happening elsewhere. And I think that we should see a lot of innovative projects coming from a lot of innovative people uh, that aren't necessarily within the Wikimedia Foundation's organizational structure simply because one organization can only do a certain number of things really well, particularly a small organization. So I don't think it would make sense to me that the Wikimedia Foundation should be directly starting a whole bunch of new projects that it's then going to neglect. I think instead what I'd love to see is the foundation being more collaborative with uh, young, interesting projects, uh, young people who are starting new projects, even to the point of, at some point, sharing some of our wealth, um, doing some grants for uh, different things, or partnership grants with, say, the Knight Foundation, who likes to fund this kind of new media stuff. Those are the kinds of things. We could be a player in that space without crowding out that space by s launching projects because they sound cool that we're not really going to support. So again, I've never talked to anybody about that on the board, but that's just my personal view that we want to be really careful. And, and so I wouldn't be supportive of an idea that the, the foundation should start, start 20 new projects next year. Um, instead, I'd like to see 20 new projects start or 100 new projects start somewhere and for us to find ways to help them and support them. Plus one. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's take another question from the audience. Hi, uh, there's a lot of communities, um, Alex Dunson from DC, there's a lot of communities of online contributors that are present in the global north um, that are kind of dispersed and haven't organized around chapters or glam events or ambassador program. 
um, and they're kind of getting neglected in real life uh, in compared to their online contributions. And I was wondering what the board's position was on promoting either chapter formation or some types of organizations outside of um, just the online community. So could you give a non-glam example of that, just to illustrate it? I uh, well, um, for example, uh, chapters. I know in the United States it's been really hard to get people to come together and form a chapter, and I know there's been a little bit of difficulty on figuring out where money would come from um, and stuff like that, or, or uh, student societies. Um, there's other examples of communities where people can come together and work um, and projects, and it doesn't seem like the foundation is uh, actively promoting these as much as I've, I'm aware. Thanks. So we've certainly seen some of the most exciting new work happen through groups of people that were getting together online that weren't necessarily tied into Wikipedia that closely, or that were like facilitated by um, by getting people to meet in in reality. And the foundation has done a few explorations as an, as, a, as an institution to support that. The public policy initiative and the global ambassadors program tried to do that very explicitly as seeding, seeding this idea of having universities become uh, agents of publishing and having them f discover Wikimedia as a platform that's for them as well as for the rest of the world to publish and to share what they already do. But for the most part, that, that work has been delegated to chapters, and it, or it's been encouraged through the growth of chapters. And when we say that the foundation is committed to a decentralized network of chapters that moves the movement forward throughout the world, uh, that's, that's largely in the space of encouraging offline work and encouraging collaboration between, between groups that have strong social ties and that are starting to understand how they can be publishers and authors and not just uh, and not just readers and participants online. I think that the foundation is, has started to be more creative in that space, and it's largely, uh, we've, been, we've been focusing on supporting great work that other people are doing. Many of the grants that people apply for now directly to the foundation or to individual chapters have been to organize events, run GLAM projects. I'd say that's by far the largest, the largest category of, of funded work. So, uh, Barry's, Barry's team and most of the grant application process, which we're planning on growing by uh, a factor of five or 10 this year, is, is, de is devoted to making those things happen. And ideally those things, precisely because they already exist offline, they have other communities in their area, foundations or universities or news organizations or research groups that, that support that work. Ideally all those projects find, um, they find an existing network and they find homes. And the foundation, the foundation it does not own that space in, in the sense of owning the projects, but is the, is the, first, uh, is the first supporter. And also, just to add to what uh, SJ said, the, the whole movement roles process that we started last year is around how to organize this movement in a decentralized way and find other ways than just the foundation or chapters to actually uh, do stuff in a self-organized, uh, self-responsible way to uh, help us all together come, b stay innovative and not uh, tapping into the, in, into the trap of having, trying to, us as Wikimedia Foundation, trying to do everything on our own uh, and then leaving not enough space for others to come up with creative ideas. Uh, I, I want to take this topic a bit further and ask Stu, uh, like a few days ago you posted on your web blog uh, uh, a post about where you, where you raised some concerns uh, about the foundation's ability to cooperate with so many different chapters out there financially, where you put the uh, fundraising uh, model that we currently have uh, in question, uh, and I would like to know what you would suggest is a better alternative for 
running such a big movement and in th under such a very complex international organizational structure. Uh, so we would like to hear you on this and maybe add the others too, so of course. Yeah, yeah you know, I think the, the, f the first kind of backdrop to this is over the last five years as a community, we've come into a lot of money. Right. Five years ago, I think our fundraiser raised one and a half million dollars. Um, last year, in total, between the chapters and the foundation, we raised almost 30. That's a 20 times increase in the amount of money that is available for us to pursue our mission. And that's a wonderful, wonderful luxury and an incredible position for us to be in. Um, but I think it, it also introduces some challenges, right? I think as all of us know, right, money is a complicated thing and it introduces new challenges, new sets of motivations and new issues. And so uh, to me, the sort of the high level principle around this issue is we've got to evolve how we think about this with the amount of money that's floating around um, because it does change things. Um, but I think for me, the core principle, the thing that matters more than anything else is that we've succeeded because of this decentralization. And we've succeeded because of this idea that we have lots and lots of different groups of people, individuals, informal associations, chapters, who do amazing work. And you know, the principle for me is that whatever money we as a movement have should flow to those parts of the movement that can best use it. Um, and it doesn't really matter who that is or what the structure is or whether it's this or that or the money flows this way or that way. Ultimately, the money should go where it can best help us achieve our mission. And that's the ideal, which I very passionately believe. And I think you know, everything we do has to be oriented around protecting that decentralization, protecting that independence of all the different parts of our movement. Now, the challenge at the same time is that you know, we operate in a regulatory context. There's all sorts of rules and laws that apply, both to international flows of funds, which are really complicated, and I know we're all figuring out as we go, to uh, each of the different entities that operate in different countries that might be nonprofits or might be associations or might be companies. Right? In the U.S., we're a 501c3, which brings with it a whole set of kind of rules and challenges that we have to manage around. So, you know, I think to me the high level principle, and I don't, I don't have the answer uh, as to how we should do things. I, you know, I, I think we're all gonna have to figure that out together. But I think the principles are we have to protect that decentralization. Um, we have to make sure money goes where it can have the highest impact. But we have to operate within the regulatory context of all the countries we live in. And I think that's, the challenge that I think over the last year we've, we've, because we have more money, we start having more regulatory issues. And I think that's where some evolution of how we think about this has got to happen. And I think we're all going to figure that out together. The board's doing some thinking about it now. I did a blog post, got a lot of great ideas and feedback from people. But again, the principles are what matter. And I think that's what we've all got to try and, we've all got to try and protect. Okay, so I think one of the things that unites some of the ideas in Stu's blog post, as well as the movement roles work that we've been doing for a year, is actually the underlying idea of accountability. And not just financial accountability, but in the movement roles work, really looking at what it means for different entities, whether it's the foundation, whether it's the chapters, whether it's any other proposed new forms of informal or formal associations, what does accountability mean both programmatically, financially, and in other ways? So this is something that I think is underlying this. Okay, on this? Okay, so let's take another question here. Okay, uh, Hauke from Germany and with the Open Knowledge Foundation. Um, so I'm, I'm a student at a uh, university and professors at my university are still very uh, they always say, okay, you can't cite Wikipedia, uh, don't use it in your essays, in your thesis, everything. Um, but yeah, yeah, what do you, what do you think of that? Um, and where do you, what do you do? You, um, are you trying to persuade uh, professors or do you think, okay, they will get it at one point that, w uh, that you can use Wikipedia and that it has an established um, good point of view and it's high quality? 
So one thing that I found interesting in the last few years working on this, working, so I'm an academic, I work in a university, and talking to academics over the course of the last few years, it's like Sue's point with journalists. Um, I think that things are changing in the academic world and now we are seeing um, a very different relationship with Wikipedia and academics um, overall. Um, people accept Wikipedia as part of their lives, as part of the information universe. Um, I went uh, this summer, I was privileged to go to the, our first higher education summit, which was in Boston, which was the last event for the public policy event, or the public policy initiative that Sue mentioned, um, which was maybe a couple hundred professors and students um, from around the world, actually, who had taken Wikipedia into their classrooms and either done assignments with uh, their students um, or had students in their classrooms doing peer training and working on the site. Um, it was incredible. And it was really interesting to meet all of these people who had come into Wikipedia in an academic context, right? And who were absolutely as passionate about the site as we are. So I think there's lots of points. Um, I think that one of them is that this is where people are. People, our students, our teachers, our professors, all read and use Wikipedia. And what I, what I tell librarians and professors when I talk to them is, we have an obligation to make this thing better, um, and it's part of it's part of our professional work. And I think that message is really actually being accepted now. So, um, I think um, in in the academic world there is um, the rule that one should only cite the original research. And we have the rule, we don't accept original, root, uh, uh, original re research. So there, there is some conflict. I don't know, and if anyone had seen this video made by the team of Achai about um, human uh, knowledge. Is anyone here who- It will who be shown here in Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, so um, in, in that video there was uh, one researcher, he said, um, so the, the video is about, about citing, right? We want to have to cite people who uh, cite knowledges that are not written. And these are actually original citations. And, and w at one point, one of the researchers said, yes, if you begin to start to publish the raw data, the original data, that will revolutionize the whole academic world because the, the academic world, if, if some physicist, for example, if he published his result, he said, I did this experiment, but actually he don't publish his raw data, he published the dist destination, of the, 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 um, the conclusion, conclusion of, of his data. But what we are, but what, what in th this video is, uh, is, is, is suggested is that we actually publish the raw data. And, and some of the researchers see that and say, this is a revolutionary process. So we are also trying to invent new things. And I, I can at this point only applaud to our community to be inventive, to be bored, to be inventive. This is from the beginning, a virtue of our community, and we should keep that on. Uh, we, don't, we don't have that much time left, so we can squeeze in like two more questions from the audience. So, okay, Kat, you're fine with that? Uh, okay. Um, I have no? a question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the girls are supporting me. Um, so I think it's wonderful that um, there's a focus on the Global South and the new strategic plan. Um, I think um, Wikipedia doesn't just, we don't just, we're not just involved in Wikipedia because we want to build a quality encyclopedia. We're also involved in Wikipedia because it's a symbol or it can be a symbol of global solidarity. Um, so it was a bit strange when I um, saw the list of countries um, that you guys are focusing on and it didn't include any countries from Africa. Um, and so um, my question is really what is the strategy 
Um, what is the foundation strategy with regard to those in Africa? Why are there no countries in Africa um, specifically being focused on? And is there a plan in the future for how we can actually build those partnerships where it is probably the weakest right now? So um, if um, in, in our strategic uh, planning, we had indeed mentioned Africa in Global South. And Africa is, uh, is a critical point for us. And for example, I was in Kenya this, this January and uh, visited our Wikimedians there and celebrated the Wikipedia, Wikipedia 10 with them together. And um, it is, is this, um, Africa has, has uh, specific um, issues like lack of infrastructure. Lack of infrastructure is something that we cannot fix by ourselves. But what we can do is support our communities there. Uh, the, the Kenya community, for example, distributed uh, wiki offline Wikipedia to the schools, to the rural area where there are no infrastructure on internet. And what we can do is indeed to support them, give them grants so that they can do that work, uh, be there, show the media that they have our support. And maybe in 10 years, in five years, the infrastructure is in Africa is also increasing. I was there, I saw that. Um, people told me that more and more villages are coming online. And at one day, we were just go there and when, when, when the situation is ripe enough, we will go there and, and we have uh, just uh, in this year approved our, our first African chapter, the South Africa chapter. Uh, South, South Africa is also <laughs> one of the country that is uh, in most mature in, in, in infrastructure and this also shows that we do have Africa in our mind and we, we, we will give them as much as support as we, as we can. Yeah, just adding to what Ting said, did you want to say? Okay. Um, just adding to what Ting said, I think this is my personal response. I think the issue for me as somebody who's from the Global South is not the j location per se. I think what's important is that work has actually begun in the Global South, right? And whether it is Africa or whether it's Asia, or whether it's with parts of Latin America, that is not personally important to me. The principle of working in the Global South is important. However, having said that, I do think that what the work in the Global South is marked by thus far is sort of an experimental, flexible approach. And my understanding is that that is actually going to be the strategy going forward. Yes, just to add to, to, uh, to this one, um, focusing on India and Brazil in our Global South uh, strategy was not meant to leave Africa or China, which is also a huge uh, country on the on the map that is still in, in light gray uh, in terms of uh, Wikipedia's reach there um, to leave them out but to focus on on those areas and to focus our attention uh, in a way that we actually can succeed there instead of trying to do single smaller steps in everywhere uh, and being in the end not successful and once we learned from our uh, engagement in uh, India and Brazil, we then can uh, come up with better ideas probably and hopefully uh, for uh, India, uh, for China and uh, also Africa. Let's, uh, Sam, let's take some other, like we're running out of time, so. <laughs> Hello, uh, I've been waiting to ask since the beginning of the session. Uh, but the question I'm going to ask bothers me, I believe, for three or four years. I mean, since I joined Wikipedia, it bothers me every November when we have, and that's the question of sustainability, but not just sustainability, financial sustainability of uh, foundation and of the movement as a whole. Uh, every year we're collecting more and more and more money. Uh, and uh, I believe if we continue rising like that, by in 20 years, our annual income will be larger than world GDP. 
<laughs> uh, so good goal, good goal. Uh, what I'm actually going to ask is, uh, are we going to run so forever? And how are we sure that next year, when we will start fundraising, uh, we will gain enough money to run Wikipedia? And uh, actually, at some point, the amount of money will not stop coming. I mean, like with articles, it started growing and growing quickly when we began. But right now we found that the rate of growth is slowing down. I mean, one same happened with our financial resources and how we can be sure how that we can rely on that we will survive. <laughs> I'm going to try that. <laughs> so I think it was in Boston when Gerard asked Jimmy the question, what do you think we could do with a million dollars? It's like a million dollars. What are the odds we're ever going to get a million dollars? And it's like, would you, you know, would we take ads for a million dollars? We haven't had to do anything with advertising. We haven't had to do anything but write a really good set of knowledge in different projects to raise this amount of money. Strangely enough, every year there's more and more great ideas what to do with that money. So sustaining Wikipedia and all the other projects is one goal, but being able to provide more and more grants and being able to make people's ideas happen with just a little effort, or maybe making an extra effort by opening an office. Those are the kind of things we can do with more money. So it's not just sustainability. I think we can do much more, and it's an opportunity. But the sustainability is also, the simple keeping the lights running, keeping the lights on the servers is also important, and it's part of the job that Sue does, is making a balance between those two. But the fundraising needs to have all those messaging in it. Okay. So just be quick, please, because we really are running out of time. So. Yeah, so, so I just say sustainability is the most important thing, right? In the end, we all want this thing we're doing to be even stronger next year, 10 years from now, 100 years from now. And so the challenge is to move as fast as we can to achieve the vision we have, right? Making the sum of all knowledge freely available, which is a pretty big, ambitious thing to try and do but not overreach. And I think that's one of the things we spend a lot of time as a board and Sue spends a lot of time on as our executive director is how do we balance that. But I'll tell you right now, I think we could spend 30 million a year just on software engineering to improve MediaWiki, improve the interface, provide a lot more tools for contribution. Like, I think there is an incredible amount that we could spend money on to take our mission forward, but we just have to do it smartly. And I think that's what we're trying to do and trying to manage all of those trade-offs. I'd say one of the things that I like about our fundraising strategy is that, in fact, we're, we have so much potential that we're not as aggressive as we have to be. We don't have to go and compromise our values to get people to give money to us like so many other organizations do. We can, we can uh, focus on the principles saying, you love us so much, if you give us a few dollars, we can keep going until uh, the end of time, basically. And with 400 million people reading us every month, uh, you know, some people can't afford to give, but many people do, and they do. And I think as long as that we continue to earn their trust and their respect and their desire to support that project, that will be sustainable. So, yeah, uh, I regret to say that lunch will be served very soon. So, uh, Ting just wanted to have some concluding remarks. So, please. So, um, uh, you, you see that we, we are actually 10 trustees and you only see nine of us. Matt is absent. Matt uh, planned to be here, but uh, he had an emergency mail from his company. He must leave uh, today morning. Uh, he apologized and uh, we, uh, he is very sad that he cannot be here. Um, and uh, we, we are also very sad that he, he cannot be here. That's uh, one thing. Uh, the second thing is we are here, um, I think, Almost all of, uh, of us are here at the menu in the next three days. Um, some, most of us will take part uh, with you in the tours. So if you have questions, just ask us. Uh, we will give answers. I was uh, yesterday afternoon in uh, evening in the party and someone t uh, said, and people all said, oh, you are talking about fundraising and, but everyone was afraid to ask me uh, questions and I, I, I had to ask them, do we, do we want to talk about this? And everyone said, yes, 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 please. <laughs> please don't be shy, ask us questions, you will get an answer and uh, we will not bite. 
the last thing I want to say, and I promise this is, um, please do take part in the, uh, in the movement for discussion. It is really, really important. Lots of people do doesn't uh, realize that um, most of trustees are involved in that. Uh, John Haggard, um, yeah, there, there he is. Uh, he is the facilitator. Please take, take time to talk to him. And uh, thank you very much. And enjoy your days.